previously on the Kadikawa show. This was the worst idea I've ever had! And it still is. In case you didn't notice, this is indeed a part two to a massive video series all about every single classic Mega Man game back to back. So if you've just joined us, please go to the description below or at the top right of this video now. Magic, isn't it? And if you're carrying on from the last part, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Are you ready to see me yell more at the bumbling blue bulbous part? I hope so, because here is Mega Man 5. The intro cutscene here reveals that Proto Man, Mega Man's older brother, despite turning back to the good side, is now a bad guy again. Make your mind up! And he's kidnapped his own creator, Dr. Light, and is rallying together, take a guess, eight robot masters to help out, take a guess, Dr. Wily, in order for him to take over the world. And the very first thing I noticed was the animation for charge shots looking a lot better. It's more flashy and prominent and feels a lot better to use. It's a lot more <laughs> and a lot less piffle. As for the game itself is concerned, it's basically the same as 4, but balanced to be way more like 2, with the least amount of bullshit in the series so far, and with even more cool ideas to help keep things fresh for 5 games in. You can slide, you can charge shot, you've got rush gadgets, but also get new level ideas entirely, which is the least I can expect this far in, but it's still nice to see, especially playing all of these games back to back. And I don't ever recommend you do that! Gravity Man stage I loved for how different it felt compared to any other Mega Man stage, with the flipping around to the top and bottom of the stage, but unlike most games, the control style actually changes around the gravity instead of remaining the same just for the sake of being confusing. If you want Mega Man to move to the right, you press right if you're at the top or the bottom of the screen. No mirroring in sight just because Mega Man is upside down. And the following Robot Master battle using this mechanic isn't massively difficult at all, but due to his weakness being a shield weapon, trying to position yourself near him while dodging his attacks but not collide entirely with him as the gravity flips over was something really brand new and memorable. And the run up to Proto Man's boss is another great idea. It's very short, yeah, but making the whole stage come down yourself by destroying blocks and not getting crushed, that's not been done before. The weapons themselves are slightly running out of ideas though, which isn't great, but the building of each stage meant that they didn't need to make things unnecessarily difficult and that you feel like you need to rely on the power-ups, which goes to show a lot about the solid level design on display. The stars are the same as the skulls from 4, the water is the same as the snake from 4 but only runs down surfaces and not up, which has its uses but overall isn't as cool. The star arrow thing is basically the hard knuckle and no, riding it isn't that useful and more dangerous over anything, especially with Rush Jet making a return. The charge kick isn't bad actually, especially for tiny enemies. The napalm bombs are really powerful but really low range, and being able to flip gravity yourself is a brilliant little power-up, as is the gyroman power that allows you to fire in front or upwards with a lot of ammo. It's kind of similar to the Metal Blades in 2, but not as exploitable and much more balanced around the level design to still keep it challenging. I mean, yeah, I still prefer the Metal Blades because of how overpowered they are, but in terms of keeping things just that little bit more tense, this is a great compromise, and in fact, I say they're running out of ideas, but the fact that so many of them are close if not identical to 4 isn't a bad thing at all. They work when they need to perfectly, but just don't seem to be as creative or imaginative as they once were. And at this point, I've only just noticed that Mega Man has a serious case of silly feet syndrome. <laughs> Also, not only does he look totally horrified when sliding, but equally looks horrified while jumping. What is wrong with this guy's face? More important than anything, though, is that you can still slide up ladders. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm not doing that joke anymore. You can always milk it too much, can't you? <laughs> Miller. Throughout each stage we also have a brand new collectible rewarding not only the keen eye but brave players who want to go out of their way to risk getting them, and by finding all of them to spell Mega Man 5 you'll discover the risk is entirely worth it because you get the brilliant robot bird companion Beat, who automatically follows around you and attacks any enemy or projectile until they're dead. This is a fantastic reward and a great incentive to step out of your comfort zone while looking for them, or in case you miss one it's definitely worth giving up a life in order to try grabbing it again, or replaying the stage. Mega Man 5 also introduces new tanks to refill every weapon and ammo and your own health, but the game only allows you to carry one at a time to keep it balanced and make you consider if it's worth using now or later, just in case another one pops up later and you can't carry it. And stepping back, the entire level design and challenges in each stage is as close to two as it can be, but with added challenges built around fast time dodging with the slide, the charge shot and rush gadgets, the terrific soundtrack, this all makes five my favourite entry so far. Even the tank distribution is just right, the power-ups are useful but not too overpowered, this is just a great game here. I mean it does still have its moments, like at the start of Wily 4 and not having a clue that you shouldn't drop from this side. Come on, that's really terrible. But that's the only proper instance of bull I can think of from the top of my head compared to the previous games. You even get Mega Man's first vehicle segment here. How fantastic is this? I mean, it's not exactly difficult or anything, but it looks and feels great and even has a boss battle. The ending also sees you climbing Proto Man's tower to fight more tricky and unique bosses. Well, 
I mean, some are tricky and some are completely mm. pathetic. But this guy, this guy was a total crumbing bastard because he constantly loves to freeze you until you get him stuck in the corner. That is. Plot wise, we then discover that the proto man that kidnapped Dr. Light was fake all along. The real proto man comes in to save us and then a fight to the end with Dr. Wily occurs once again. What a surprise. Come if you dare. Ooh, don't worry, I will. With the help of Hard Man. And I actually thought these ending segments were some of the best in Mega Man. How many bastard in castles does this guy have? The stages themselves are top stuff, and the bosses are once again not the hardest in the world, but very unique and interesting instead of the simple run, dodge, and shoot right affairs we've seen so far. The worm thing here was probably my favourite because you have to attack it so that it can attack you, but then you use its own attack to get higher ground and then attack it back while avoiding aerial attacks. It's really cool stuff. As for the ending Wily bosses, though, they are probably the easiest we've had to deal with so far, with the final form being a much slower version of Mega Man 4, in the dark, only hittable for a second and with lots of lasers to avoid, but with beat on your side it becomes a battle of patience more than anything else. After all this, the ending sees Wily running away like a little bitch and Mega Man saving Dr. Light. But oh no, the castle starts crumbling yet again so Mega Man can't catch Wily this time and holds the ruins up to save Dr. Light. Wily then decides he's Michael Jackson for a second and then Proto Man jumps in once again to rescue us, letting Wily escape AGAIN and leaving us open for Mega Man 6. Mega Man Balboa. Before we get to that one though, I have to show you how lovely it is if you decide to use one of those special tanks that refills absolutely everything. boy, so it appears as though everything has gone a lot less doom and gloom despite the fact Wily is loose again. This game is about a rigged robot fighting tournament with a sponsor known as Mr. X. <laughs> what, you mean Dr. Wily? Who's taken all the ticket money and stuff in order to fund his goal to reprogram eight robot masters and, you guessed it, take over the world. He says he's been ordering Wily around this entire time, but come the bloody hell on, I haven't seen a disguise that unconvincing since my great granddad disguised himself as a corpse to get out of my fifth birthday party. Oh wait, that was real. Mega Man 6, I can't add much more onto what I said about 5. It's more or less the same game, but with once again slight tweaks and just not as good as 5, if you ask me. Which for 6 games in really struggled to leave any kind of impact on me, but that could be from marathoning all of them back to back. Presentation wise though, I think this looks the best of the bunch with the same visual fidelity as 5, but with way more creative themes. Medieval stage, Greek stage, glistening sun-kissed desert stage, these are brilliant. And this is probably my favourite screen of classic Mega Man so far, it looks so wonderful for 8-bit. You even have an Arabian level theme with lots of oil and a flame man robot master that wears a, a turban oh dear is this as insensitive as oil man in mega man powered up though don't you got a place near your house for phillips i'll let you be the judge of that because i ain't touching that subject with a 50 foot hard man once again i'm saying that a lot aren't i the soundtrack is great the controls and mega man's moves are the same the bosses are all challenging yet not like three with uncontrollable spamming and their patterns feel good to nail and there's a few new obstacles added in here like sticky oil that's safe to move in if a little rigid but if fire comes near it it'll kill you instantly so making sure you kill enemies before that happens is vital to keep the stage a little easier there's also a few twists on the existing mechanics like with Rush, instead of him acting as a separate interactable gadget, he now combines into you to give you permanent upgrades while they're equipped with no ammo but their own charge meter that either comes back after a short period of time or lets you know when it's ready for a powerful attack. And this little twist is enough of a reason for me to recommend giving this one a look despite how identical it is to 4 and 5 and change the way you approach stages in a surprising amount of ways. You can choose to tank damage but give a lot back in the power suit at the cost of low range, and the Rush Jet next to the Metal Blade in Mega Man 2 is probably my favourite ability in the entire classic series. It isn't a weapon but instead a literal lifesaver and a fantastic secret grabber. You can't slide or charge shot while it's on, but that's a small price to pay for the temporary flight and boosted floating jump. It's so damn good to use, and it doesn't last as long as the rush jet, but really doesn't need to. It's amazing enough as it is. As far as the other boss weapons go though, I mean, I must be honest, I can't say anything about any of them for the first time so far. They are either copies of previous weapons or are outright just different versions of the Mega Buster. They are all majorly disappointing, except the spread shot blizzard attack. Not since 3 have I felt like this actually. But I do appreciate the game actually showing you what each weapon does after you beat the boss for it, a lovely detail. And for some stages, instead of a dark patch on the main menu to signify you beat it, you get Mega Man's face there instead almost as if to say, Yeah, I did it! But I mean, this is basically the exact same game in enemy and platform design as 4 and 5, which is, well, fine, but not as good as either of them, so my feelings overall are... Meh? Meh. This could be seen as an extension to 5, I guess, and the Rush Jet adapter alone is enough to make me say I enjoyed it, but like, you don't even have the collectible letters for that extra sense of rewarding exploration and getting past treacherous situations like what 5 does. To get beat, you just... 
find alternate exits to some of the stages. Even the run through Dr. What, sorry, Mr. X's lair is full of objects and bosses that just aren't all that new or surprising, especially in the last few bosses on the home stretch. They just keep on getting easier, I swear it. And in a plot twist that should shock absolutely nobody, Dr. Wily is the one behind everything, and so we chase him off to his fortress of, okay, come on now, this isn't funny anymore. That is a blatant prick and sack. There is no excuse for imagery this disgusting and blatant. What the hell is wrong with you, you creepy old codger? <laughs> And after the exact same bosses, I swear to God, we've already done with another fight against Wily in the dark. After a few bops to the head, we seize the day. Oh no, look, your plan has failed. I hope this means you won't be jailed. Oh my God, he has been. Holy shit, Mega Man actually arrested the stupid crazy asshole and the game ends there. What could possibly go wrong now? Well, I guess everything because he's Mega Man 7. After the slight disappointment overall I felt towards 6, I was really taken aback to see that we're on the Super Nintendo now, and this game looks and sounds absolutely marvellous. Just look at this, look at this, the game doesn't even bother hiding it. From the starting gate it comes out, shoves its pelvis in your face and says, Yep, yeah, I'm hot, suck it! And with the soundtrack, I mean I have got nothing against the old soundtracks, but after 22 hours back to back of 8-bit crunches and screeches it was starting to get on my cats. And here the music is not only upbeat and atmospheric, but also smooth as butter to my ears. As is the gameplay itself actually, there's no stuff no slowdown, incredible animations and colours. This is the best looking Mega Man next to Mega Man 8, but I haven't got there yet. All of this visual detail is clear even from the cutscenes and such. Let's see here. The plot this time is that Dr. Wily has been captured, finally, but he expected this to happen all along. I really don't know why. The police here are so useless it took six games for that to even happen to you, you daft apof. And so he created four Robot Masters to spring to life after six months to start searching for and release Dr. Wily so that he- SWEET HONKING CRACKSHOES! They actually called him that! They knew he's a sick and disgusting disgusting lonely old man too! <laughs> Anyway, as to be expected, they break Wily out of prison and he heads off to take over the- Aside from that horrible typo though, the dialogue itself is much better and features actual character too, and classic tunes and jingles have returned but remixed into 16-bit bliss. offset, despite updated hardware and Mega Man X already being out for two years when this game came out, it's clear that Mega Man 7 isn't concerned with jumping ship entirely with the classic formula, and instead uses the power of the Super Nintendo to pay as much homage to the classic series in the prettiest and nicest sounding way it can possibly manage, and I'm totally okay with that. Plus you've still got the silly feet, so that helps. <laughs> You begin the game this time by picking between only the four robot masters mentioned in the earlier cutscene, which in all honesty is a big departure from what we're used to so far and shatters replayability in half compared to all the other games before it. So yeah, that's really strange. And also, not seeing their names until you enter their stage is just simply a pain in the arse since you'll never be able to guess what weapon would be best for the stage if you don't know what the robot master is even called to guess what they'd be weak to. You do unlock the rest after the first four are gone, by the way, but it's still an odd choice. Despite all of this though, the game isn't just calling back to Mega Man's roots in the most faithful way it can muster, because this is actually a full-on big step down in terms of stress and difficulty compared to what we've been through so far. Maybe it's the more pleasant visual style, or maybe it's because the game feels a little bit more zoomed in than anything, meaning not as much can be going on on the screen at once. Or maybe it's the smoother feeling controls and animations without any stuttering at all, but I found Mega Man 7 to be the easiest game so far. It's not insultingly easy, don't get me wrong, and it kicked my sorry shitter a good few times before I understood how some enemy stages and bosses worked, especially in Turbo Man stage, which, I mean, just screw it. Tires that push you into bottomless pits everywhere that will always succeed unless your timing is pinpoint perfect and a one hit kill fire attack that appears out of nowhere. Whack me off and call me Sandy. We're seven games in and still trying to do this bollocks. And knockback can still be a bit of a bitch too along with those lovely enemies built around bottomless pits. But all in all seven is still a much more comfortable time compared to the other games. You have all the same abilities too including sliding and charge shot and rush comes back in gadget form and not suits. But everything here just doesn't feel as aggressive as it did before. It's a far cry from the other games. My guess is that they were trying to stay away from the insanity of Mega Man X so it didn't feel like the same game, but that's a huge speculation. Boss attacks are back to 4, 5 and 6's quality of readable and fair attacks that will punish you until you learn them too. And once again, I couldn't tell you much about the boss weapons. Not because they're identical to previous ones or anything, but because I never found myself relying on any of them at all because of the difficulty drop. And that is a bit of a shame considering how valuable they were in the previous games and the fact that you can swap between them on the fly with the trigger buttons is incredibly useful. I mean, I thought they were cool in a few places like lighting up a dark room in Shade Man's mansion with the electric weapon, but that's all I remember really, and a few enemies stand out as particularly annoying, like the cockroaches and the bobsled spherical things, but because of the lack of standout moments and it being the same game since 4 but easier, it's probably the most forgettable one so far to me. Not bad whatsoever, in fact I recommend you start here along with Mega Man 2 and 5 for your first time ever if you want to get into the series. It's a much more enjoyable time with minimal teeth grinding frustration, but it's still lacking any kind of, you know, 
Ka-cha! It even has the introduction of a shop which you can use bolts you find in the stages to spend on grabbing new items from backup E-Tanks to extra lives and one-use spike repellents. This is a great addition, I must say, and makes the final product less stressful to deal with along with everything else the game does. In fact, I only use the other weapons whenever shooting straight ahead didn't do the job or against mini-bosses, and I think the devs realise this too, because to compensate for the slightly more forgiving playtime, they changed a number of small things against you, like having stage lengths usually doubled from what you're used to, way more unique and pretty dangerous hazards, a charge shot that takes a bit longer to charge up than you're used to, a really fast drop speed in between screen transitions so predicting and reacting to what's ahead really isn't that easy, your iframes after attacks have been significantly reduced and if you want to get access to those rush abilities, you don't just get them, you have to find them and then get to them without dying and all of those are a nice compromise to make for the slightly slower pace of 7. The best way to play this game in my opinion however is with the newly added rapid fire button to fire 3 pellets at once of your mega buster insanely quickly or over and over again if those 3 are off screen fast enough for you to keep the chain going. I don't know if this was on the Super Nintendo version, but it was given a button command on the Legacy Collection too, so I used it all the time, and it makes some of those moments of dodge-filled panicked rushes way more fun to deal with since you can attack back very fast yourself. And that's what Mega Man 7 is to me. Fun. Very fun. It's still the classic structure, still the classic formula and enemies, still the classic controls and items like E-Tanks, but it all just flows a little smoother and doesn't feel as chaotic as any other game before it. Protoman's also here to give you hints that you already knew about. Okay. It's not easy easy, but definitely the easiest Mega Man I've ever played, so yeah, start here if you want a taste of what classic Mega Man is like without you wanting to rip your own hair out. Which I already did years ago, so now I have no choice but to slice it off instead. For the last stretch of this game, we have a strange rivalry with a new character known as Base, along with his dog Treble, and yes, I know they're in a game called Mega Man and Base, but that game wasn't in the Legacy Collections, and honestly, after seeing some people's videos about it, this abomination of a boss battle. I wouldn't touch that game after I went to the toilet and didn't wash my hands. And they begin with wanting to help you out, but it turns out that he was a creation of Dr. Wily the whole time, and so decides to take you on in a fight to the death, which I must be honest is a damn good battle, especially if you didn't have his weakness like I didn't. And the last few stages and bosses then remember it's a classic Mega Man and so amps up the difficulty by a fair degree, leading to some pretty nail-biting encounters, and then finally against big old Wily himself, whose first form I had no problem with. I could take him down without taking a single hit, no problem at all. But the last form of Wily, my god, he can suck on cold meat. The hardest ending boss in a Mega Man game so far, as far as I'm concerned. This dude is close to impossible unless you stock up on tons of items beforehand in the shop, because no matter what you do, you will, I repeat, will take hits. Look at the damn attack patterns here. Unless he is right above me, I can slide to the side and jump over the elemental attacks, but anywhere else, fudge if I know what to do. And every one of these attacks, except the electric shock, takes off so much health it's borderline unplayable without E-Tanks to keep the battle going. And if you reach this part of the game without any backup items like I did for my first time, just, just, just give up. Go back, farm bolts, buy E-Tanks, and go back into the stages. But I suppose this final form of Wily is so difficult to the point that it gives Mega Man a decent excuse to finally justify murdering him in cold blood. I wonder if I destroy the ball section first. But of course he doesn't do that damn sense of right and wrong getting in the way, and so base drops in, saves Wily at the last minute, and then we're on to Mega Man 8. Also, Wily, I don't know what's going on with your chest here, but I like it. <laughs> Okay, sorry everybody, but I am going to do a little bit of a cheat here. I actually already did an entire Ken Icarus video all about Mega Man 8 with my good friend Gilly the Kid, which you can go and watch there as well. Magic, isn't it? It's crazy. I would go over all of that game's twazzock again, but the thing is, I don't feel like I need to repeat myself. It's already there in another video, so you can go and see it right now, and if you don't really want to go and see it, well, here are some highlights from it. Birds flying, lots of colours, running and jumping around with jolly music. Mega Man can now swim. Damn, that's satisfying. Brand new abilities for Rush. Holy shit, the trees attack you! I found all of these guys a great and fun challenge with totally varied and interesting methods of fighting them, even with the correct weaknesses. I'll be nice on you! You must recover all the energy immediately, Mega Man. I don't think you will. Jump, 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 slide, slide, jump, slide, slide, jump, jump, slide, slide, jump, jump, slide, slide, jump, jump, slide, slide, jump, jump. And then 12 years later, Mega Man 9 happened. So hey, what do you do after you're done making classic Mega Man for the Super Nintendo? Jump to the Nintendo 64? Jump to the GameCube? No. Wait until the Wii, PS3 and Xbox 360. Okay, fair enough, but what really shocked me was that despite the more modern console release, the game went back to 8-bit. Then I was even more shocked to see that there was no intro cutscene either, and instead you jump straight into the level select from a static menu. Then I was even more shocked to see our first ever female robot master. Oh, and we also have Plug Man. 
Yes, Plug Man. At least now he can join forces with Hard Man and we've got both ends covered. For a second I was a bit worried we were calling back to this 8-bit style and lack of story for the sake of laziness for a game released in 2008 and the ninth entry to a classic series, but then, luckily, after the first Robot Master you take down, we do get a bit of story with cutscenes and dialogue, so at least we haven't gone that far back. In the simplest terms, Dr. Wily is back again, but with no apparent connection to a string of attacks from 8 Robot Masters and a video shows up of Dr. Light making these robots himself, <laughs> causing Wily to ask people for donations and in order to combat the evil Dr. Light. Why anybody believes this creature is beyond me, considering Wily has done this eight times before, but what do I know? I don't live in Building City. Maybe the residents' heads are so full of cement that they're actually buildings themselves. And so the rest of the game is about stopping the robots and proving Dr. Light's innocence. Alrighty then, let's go. You'll also notice it's not only visually where the game is stripped back, we are now back to Mega Man 2 levels of control. As in, we can no longer charge shot or slide. You still have rush gadgets though, and the turbo fire button from Mega Man 7, which I still love, and the shop system from 7, which will save you more than once. As far as the rest goes, it's as close to 2 in terms of set piece platforming and enemy waves as it gets, especially with the more limited control, but it also throws in even more experimental obstacles that I really didn't see coming. There are swings that you have to shift your weight around so that they can be exploited in many different ways. There's pink launching capsules that fly you all over the place, and more surprisingly, the game is built more around preemptive warnings of what's coming up in the stages and showing you how things work before giving you a challenge to conquer. For instance, with this new enemy in this space stage, the game lets you get grabbed by the first one in safety to show you how it works, and then tries it on you again but with life-threatening obstacles to test your understanding of it. I even loved the subtle design choice here when you run past one of these things dropping from the top of the screen with no problem at all, you'll miss it. But once you make your way up to the above platform, you won't be able to run past it when it drops again, and if you weren't paying attention earlier, you'll get grabbed by it, but you still have a chance to save yourself from the insta-kill spikes if you remembered that you walked past them a few seconds ago, ready for you to try the run again. This above all the other games in my opinion is the most interested with giving you a tough but totally fair journey, but it does test your attention more than the other games too, like with some obstacles you assume you're totally familiar with for the game to only stick its finger up at you because hey, this is a new game after all so don't expect an identical copy you arrogant ignoramus. <laughs> The game still has optional trickier routes that massively reward you, the stage lengths are shorter again, this is way closer to classic Mega Man than 7 was alright, and despite being 9 games in it still managed to surprise me, like in Tornado Man stage with these balloon enemies. When I shot them expecting them to go away immediately like usual, only for the balloon itself to burst and then have the enemy fly towards me for one last attack, that was pretty funny and totally unexpected for me. As was when I got attacked by this octopus here and got covered in oil, and when I saw some extra lives that then turned out to be those prickhead shell enemies in disguise, I can't tell you how charming I found that to be. Bosses are fantastic as well with the same readable and learnable attack patterns and even some managed to surprise me once again like with Jewel Man, which took me too long to figure out that he was only jumping when I was jumping meaning that you can use that to exploit his movements and punish him. That's a really clever twist. And their weapons are back to being amazing like the Magma one that's like another spread gun that's only one shot at a time to balance out its power. The Hornets are a homing missile that don't only lock on and destroy targets but even pick up the dropped items from enemies and gives them back to you. The Laser Trident is essentially the replacement to the charge shot except usable in rapid fire. The bomb, I love this weapon. You fire it, activate it when you want to, and it sucks up any enemy and projectile straight into its void for easy room clear outs. The dual shield as well is the best shield by far since it mixes all the previous shields together. You can run and jump while wearing it, unlike the leaf shield in 2, fire it whenever you wish, like in 2, or keep yourself guarded instead and just protect yourself like with the last few games. The tornado attack is essentially a screen nuke and very fun to use. Concrete gives you a temporary platform for spike pits and climbing, but also kills most enemies instantly at the cost of no item drop, and the plug balls fire straight downwards are very fast and stick to any solid surface until it hits a target. This may be compensating for your lack of charge shot and slide, but I don't care. Mega Man 9 has the best selection of boss weapons in the whole series bar none, and every single one of them was so useful to the point that I saw myself running out of ammo more than any other game before it, I loved them so much. The final stages also show off that Wily actually somehow managed to talk nearly scrapped robots back into working for him, which is all caught on this one robot master's data chip, but before we can send this to the police, Wily steals the chip, meaning another trek to his house in order to take him down. As for some of these stages though, well, not since Mega Man 1 have I seen right angular jumps with strict ceilings this awful. There's no room for error here whatsoever and I hate it all with a passion.
Smasher. To get this far and constantly game over because your timing isn't absolutely pixel perfect over an insta-kill trap is so ridiculously unfair it nearly made me rage quit. And for the love of all that is holy, the ending bosses and stuff aren't the hardest in Mega Man history, but do not, I repeat, do not die at the ending portions and lose all of your items and tanks, because if you die there learning the attacks of bosses and stages, get through the Robot Master rematches and all that jazz and then game over at the very end, unlike 7 where you can start off at the Wily stage you were just on, here you begin all the way back at the start of Wily Castle all over again! With all of those piece of shit horrible jumps that could cause you to game over all over again. Seriously, this is my least favourite stage in all the classic Mega Man games for absolute definite. This ending ruins the whole game for me because of this restarting system. I know the games aren't the longest and it's all about replayability to figure stuff out and come back stronger, but why force players to go through every single boss horrible level and rematch again just because you weren't 100% sure how the final Wily encounters worked when you got there? No joke, at this point I'd played so much Mega Man that I hadn't washed in three days straight and I started to smell like a dead rotting pig. <laughs> so while stacking up on items in the shop, I even bought Mega Man the chance to get his hair out so he could at least let a bit of air get to it. After a rematch with the bloody sodding devil, which is, uh, well, not too bad actually, we then get a very cool fight involving bouncing eggs back at Wily, followed by a tricky but easily telegraphed fiery attack flying Wily, and then a difficult yet much easier version of the asinine Wily capsule fight from Seven, which then ends with an actually funny scene of Mega Man showing off all the times Wily has begged pathetic for forgiveness and yet keeps on being evil. Should have killed him when you had the chance, Megs! So then Wily agrees to give up and takes us to Dr. Light's prison cell, which Proto Man immediately warns us is a trap, but we ignore it because Mega Man's head must be full of cement too, leaving Mega Man shocked on the floor, Wily detonating his own damn castle. Where does he keep getting the funding to build these things? And then after being rescued, a very cute credit sequence happens, showing us all what happened to the originally planned to be scrapped Robot Masters doing much more friendly and helpful jobs. A lovely touch to a lovely game. And yes, aside from the run of the end game, I massively enjoyed Mega Man 9. It's basically Mega Man 2 again, but with much better weapons and rush gadgets, so logically this would mean I like it more than 2, but... I don't, and I'll tell you why. If this were 3, I'd be way more inclined to say this was better, but this is a 2008 eight sequel to the original Mega Man. There's not enough different here for me to say it's one of the best this late on into the series, especially since it went back to the 8-bit aesthetic. It's brilliant fun and a great Mega Man game, but it's not a great sequel. It takes too many steps back from 5, especially for me, to confidently say that it's better than 2, but hey, like I said, it's still a terrific action platformer. Before we jump to the final game though, Mega Man 10. Can I just warn you on something very important? In the shop, do not buy Roll's face for 200 bolts. I nearly did, thinking it was actually worth something until I looked up what it does. It changes her appearance. If I wasted 200 bolts on that, I would have screamed so loudly that my vocal cords would have been splayed out across this table. Oh my god, I really have played nine games for this series, haven't I? Well, I mean, to start off with, this is different. You get to pick between Mega Man and Proto Man, the latter of which has the slide and charge shot. <laughs> yep, I'm sold, I'm picking him first. And what's this? Difficulty options? We haven't had that since Mega Man 2. What a lovely addition. I'll pick normal though, since I have an advantage with Proto Man's moveset already, and the fact that he can deflect bullets whenever he jumps. He can't fire more than twice at a time instead of the three times like Mega Man can, making the turbo button a lot less useful, but eh, I like the added acrobatics more. It was then I discovered after crying in my mom's blankie that Proto Man is in fact the hard mode of this game. Yeah, because he has half the health as Mega Man. So four robot masters into the game's worth of progress and dozens of deaths later, I decided it was too hard for me, it was too much, so I decided to start the whole game from the beginning and I hate my life! Here we have a slightly darker story though, which I wasn't expecting. There's a deadly infection to robots going around known as Roboenza. Don't ask me how robots get sick. This is coming from a series with this on its front cover. Wily then actually comes to Dr. Light, Proto Man and Mega Man peacefully after Mega Man's sister Robot Roll gets infected and says that an infected robot master has stolen the machine that he built to create medicine for the illness. So off we go to save everyone yet again, and well, damn, this couldn't be any more similar to 9 if it tried. That is, if you pick Mega Man at least. It could be because at this point I'm totally fatigued on the games, but this really is the same game, just with a character select and lots of different dotted obstacles all over the place, some of which were really cool actually. The way these power belts worked into the mini boss for Sheep Man stage was a fantastic touch, and yes, Sheep Man is now a robot master, don't question it. Bah. And it was cool to see some more modern real life themes in the stages, like that point and click 
dragging mouse. A bit jarring to see at first, but equally very cool and different. And how about a pooey old sewer level? This is new. And a football stadium. Why not? It's even got an evil goalpost robot, killer bouncing balls, and evil robot lockers. This is very creative stuff, all right? Since you can pick between the characters, though, the game once again isn't built around sliding since only Proto Man can do it, leaving it as mainly an evasive action. But this, aligned with the fact that Proto Man has rushed jet from the start of the game, just isn't worth the extra difficulty, in my opinion. Especially with the added amount of bullshit here. Compared to 9, there's plenty more stupid, annoying moments that really hold it back, not only as a sequel to 9, but as a 10th damn entry. For instance, how do you feel like fighting a transmorphing devil monster that takes up to a third of the screen and can push you into a bottomless pit that's all around you? Because it's here, it's boring, it can hit you only around four times before you need an E-Tank. This is worse than one's yellow devil, if you ask me. Screw this boss in every hole it possibly has. Off-screen kills here, like in the sewer stage, are all over the place. The game loves overflowing you with enemies and bottomless pits, and there's a few more aggravating gotcha traps to drain all your lives to, especially with holes. Do not trust any holes in Mega Man 10, otherwise Plug Man and Hard Man will pop out and surprise you. Enemies will be jumping out of these things all the time just to piss you off, and this all feels more artificially tricky for the sake of it being the 10th bloody entry. As Proto Man, there's even less items in the shop you can buy, and along with every other handicap he has, like lower health and lower damage output, it's terrible that nowhere in the whole game does it even hit at this being a harder version of the same game. I thought I picked my difficulty at the, you know, difficulty menu. What's with this secret difficulty here? And it's a very cruel trick considering that Mega Man lost the slide and charge shot in the last game, so of course you'd want that back. Why wouldn't you pick Proto Man? If you do pick Mega Man though, this whole game is essentially 9, just not as good. I enjoyed it fine enough, but for the number 10, any impact it had of anything slightly new just isn't there anymore. I mean, I liked the sandstorms here and how they blind you and blow you around bottomless pits and easy smaller enemies, that was pretty cool stuff. And those trucks that honk to warn you that they're coming off screen before running you down, but you can also use them as a platforming obstacle. And the platform that moves left and right as you stand on each end. And the entire sports stage now I think about it, but that's all that really stuck out to me. Solar Man stage though is easily my least favourite in the entire series, all because of these jumping flames. They do so much damage, take up most of the screen, and you have to avoid them while getting attacked from flying enemies, while avoiding lasers from a flower that is only vulnerable when it fires the lasers, but if you jump to avoid the laser, there's a chance that the jumping fire will be above you anyway, making it impossible to not take damage in any situation. And you try climbing ladders while all this stuff is going on, because every mistake throws you all the way back down the ladders, not only meaning you lost your health, but lost all your progress, and meaning you'll go through the hard stuff all over again. I hate this whole stage. But I mean, the game in its entirety is fine, but it's just there. Can't say much about the powers either. We've got another shield that isn't as good as a dual shield, because you're still open to attack if a certain part of the shield is damaged. The thunder wall is kind of cool, but it takes far too long to activate for it to be useful. You can freely control the bombs where they fly, but firstly, they move way too quickly, and you won't be able to steer them with all this other crap going on. The blades are okay, but only fire up and down depending on if you're running or jumping. And do you want to freeze enemies? but nothing else, because you can do that now. The solar attack I use the most. Powerful, cuts through waves of enemies in front and behind you, and has great coverage. And yes, by this point at the ending of the game, I was smart enough to stock up on E-Tanks and weapon refills ready for the end, and I'm glad I did, because you don't only get a nice callback to all the other Mega Mans by fighting all the different robot masters from his history, but it also means you'll spend a lot more E-Tanks just trying to guess what weapons you have that could possibly be the weakness of a totally unrelated boss from another game. This then leads on to a cool little throwback to that Mega Man 5 boss, where you had to use platforms and avoid area attacks in order to punish the boss from high up. The only time I found the Thunderwall to be massively useful, actually. Look at that damage! Oh, cure! Then we have more damn rematches with this game's robots because the game hates you, and then we reach Wily himself, whose first form is once again reminiscent of that fight in Mega Man 5 and a great little battle to nail down. Then the second phase, which is a little more aggressive, but nothing you shouldn't be prepared for, especially for number 10. And instead of an immediate capsule fight, you instead go all the way up to bloody space for a zero-G encounter with a slightly easier version of the same discipline appearing, reappearing fight you all know all too well by this point. After defeating him, Wily then turns out to get sick from the robo virus despite not being a robot. What? But before you can even wonder what that's all about, it doesn't matter anyway because a few days later he's recovering in hospital and just leaves with all the medicine for everyone else behind. D why? W why? What? And with all those unanswered questions and a complete anticlimax, we finally come to the end of Mega Man 10 and we won't see the rest of the story unfold until Mega Man 11. Okay, to conclude this absolute beast of a video series, all I can really say is this. Firstly, do not play these games back to back in any kind of time pressure like I did. I swear to God I knocked off 10 years of my lifespan by doing so. And secondly, despite my raw, pure anger that most of the games gave me with their particular moments, 
I actually did enjoy these games a lot overall. I was just really, really stressed out and under time to do it. That's the difference. And in my opinion, if you want to get into Mega Man, I can only recommend you doing so with the classic series with the legacy collections because of the save feature. If you're new to the series and don't want to throw your controller at the TV, then this save feature will be your saving grace. I mean, I don't know how, especially in the 80s and 90s, they expected kids that they were advertising to to do all of this without that. And if you were one of those kids back in the day, I can only salute you. I don't know how you still have your sanity intact, you're braver than I am. That, and despite the immense similarities between every single game, they manage to follow from each other really well. It does feel like a quest of truly epic proportions, and it doesn't matter how similar they all feel because they still somehow manage to be engaging. The gameplay at its core is just that solid, even if a lot of it is the same stuff. If I'm going to be honest, I really don't like the tradition of fighting every single Robot Master all over again just for the sake of it near the end of the game. It pads them out more than anything and just drains your resources before the final bosses with Wily, but I suppose that's what you get into when you play Mega Man, so you just need to be ready for it. If though I had to pick from my favourite to least favourite classic Mega Man game, not because I majorly dislike some more than the others, but if I just had to put my favourite ones into a particular order, 5 is my favourite without question for the power-ups, variety and tightness of the whole experience. Followed by 2, then 9, 4, 8, 7, 6, 10, 1, and then 3, because at least with 1 I can forgive it shite for being the first in the series, but 3 games in, that is one that I can honestly say I really did didn't like all that much despite all the cool staples that would appear in the future games. And with that, well, I'm done now. No more Mega Man until Mega Man 11. And do you think I'm ever going to do a video series like this ever again? <laughs>everybody, you're talking to a completely broken man that's probably pissed himself. Hey everyone, before the outtakes come on today guys, thank you so much for sticking with me during this massive endeavour of a beastly video project. Like I said, I was um, intending to get this done as one big huge video, ended up not being that easy. I just want to thank every single one of you for being so patient with the video schedule being completely screwed over and all of that stuff. I was supposed to have all of these parts done last Sunday, that's how much I underestimated the difficulty and the stress and the anger and everything that this series would take to make. So thank you, thank you one and all for staying and actually while this video goes out today, I'm in LA right now. I'm going to be filming a couple of projects with some close friends of mine. I'm not going to say what's going on exactly, but it's a bit it's a bit secret right now. But when it gets done, I'll be sharing them around and you'll see what I have been doing. But while I am here, while I've made this video public, yes, that does mean that when I get back, which will be in a few days after this video goes out, I'm not going to have enough time to get another Kadekaris done or even a review done by the time, like, Saturday rolls around or anything like that. But I am planning, hopefully, to get something out the following Saturday um, and maybe a tiny video on the Wednesday just so I can regain my sanity from the jet lag and everything. I hope that's okay guys. I'm sorry that the whole schedule has been screwed up a little bit but you know that just goes to show you don't ever underestimate stress, don't ever underestimate your workload and that's all I can say I've learned from this video. And lastly, once again, special, special thanks to every single name on the screen right now that have helped support this channel via Patreon during all of this nonsense going on. Thank you for being so patient, every single one of you. And special, special thanks to the top tier supporters on my page. Omama2, Basil, Gamer Man, I Have a Portal Gun, Robert Alamsha, Oblivion Rising, William Sanborn, Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Zakari, Mills Kahai, Binary Code, Kirsten B, QB, Cyberpunk Symphony, Thomas Olsen, Nathan Young, Chumba Wumba, Ellen Ripley, Josh Von Hamburg, James Nardiello, Daniel Leon, DC Dungeon Master, Braden Kenny, Mitchell Reed, Jane Ives, and AD Thornton Smith. Thank you so much, every single one of you. Rolling. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <It's just working. laughs> rolling? Stan, are you rolling? What is going on with your head? <laughs> Speaking of milk, oh yes, here's my Bravissimo <laughs> catalogue. <laughs> I'm busy! I can't have ball. I'm busy. Oh, cute. <laughs> what the hell was that? I do not know. <laughs> horrible. Don't worry, I will. Hungry? <laughs> oh no, he's... No. No. <laughs> Stan, I love you, but you're right in the way. I know, but you're, you're right in the way though. You, you are. No, no. Are you ready to see me yelling more at the blue? <laughs> are you ready to see me yell at the bumbling blue? <laughs> are you ready to see me yell at the blue? <laughs> <laughs> blue. <laughs> blue. <laughs> the blooper. <laughs>